Hey guys, we're here at Emeryville, California at Oxide at their headquarters. We're taking a look at the Oxide Rack. This thing is a turnkey cloud computer solution. They'll just ship this thing to you on a pallet. It'll show up at your door. Within a couple hours after plugging it into networking, plugging in a couple power cables, that's all you have to do. You have a turnkey cloud virtualized solution. This is great. This can replace any sort of actual in-cloud and bring it on-prem. This can replace VMware instances that might be aging out. The attention to detail on these things in person is absolutely stunning and the rack is really impressive on its own. But let's take a look at what we got inside this thing. Taking a look at the front of the Oxide rack, this is where the business happens. You got your two sidecars here, which is what handles your networking in and out of the device into your data center. And then across the front, you've got all the power supplies. There's six of these bad boys in here. They're 240 volt rated for 23 amp max. Back of the napkin, that says that that's about 5,500 watts out of this thing. And these things are massive and they are 80 plus titanium rated. Absolutely robust. And inside this crazy power shelf that we have here, around the back of it, you've got these power shelf controllers. They've got the ARM service processor, they've got their networking on board, and then a big old chonky interface to talk back to the entire rack. So these will actually plug into each switch, switch zero and switch one, and then you can manage this through the software. It'll actually show you very detailed information about each of the power supplies, what the current draw is, where your power is going, and how it's being used. Removing these nodes is really easy. You've got a little button right here to release and then it just pulls down and it slides out almost effortlessly. If you notice here, they've got this nice little cam lock mechanism in here that helps pull the whole entire chassis into the back plane. This is really important. If you've ever worked with blades a lot, you can get what's known in the industry sometimes as pin virus where if you put the blade in wrong, it'll smash a pin and you won't know why it's working. So you try and put it in another slot. And now it's smashed pin in another slot and the blade is, has a smashed pin. And then you go to put another blade in there and now everything's smashed and you don't know what happened until you really look at it closely. This system actually addresses that specifically by using these pins to stop it before it goes all the way in. And then that last little bit is mechanically interlocked in order to help prevent any sort of smashed pins from happening. You've got 10 NVMe bays across the front of these. We've got these custom made IC dot caddies in here and these are what hold the U.2 drives. The only thing that I gotta knock these guys for a little bit is they're not toolless drive caddy designs, they're screws. But I did talk to the CTO and he told me that if you do have a problem with your drive, they'll take the whole thing back and they'll send you a new one. So you're not gonna be the one to have to deal with these screws, they are. Around the back of the oxide rack here, you can see we've got our central bundle of cables. This is all the cables that are on this thing other than your power whips, which go in right here. This comes pre-installed from oxide. This is how you get it. You never have to touch it. You're not gonna have a problem in these cables. Because of the almost blade-like nature of these nodes and the way they all interconnect, there's a big DC bus bar that, that these things all jack into, powered by those six 5,000 watt power supplies, and then all the networking's handled here. So you're never gonna have to touch cabling if you put this thing in your data center, other than your networking around front and your power cords. So taking a look at this, this is the Oxide sidecar. This is what handles all the networking in and out of the rack. You can see this is an early development board. It's really cool to see. We've got some debug heading going on here. We've got a power bodge where they had to take a whole new power controller and put it in. I got word that the guys that are working on this might not want you to see this, but I think it's really cool to see where this company's come from. Let's take a look at the full production version now. So taking a look at the Oxide sidecar here, you see this massive heat sink. This is close to a production version here a little bit different than the dev board that we just checked out, but you can still see a lot of the same resemblances. This has the Intel Tofino chip in it. It's got a ton of power delivery, ton of IO. This black heat sink down here takes care of the slower networking that handles the service processors and all of the different nodes. So taking a look inside a couple of these compute nodes here, the guys let me pull these out and open them up to show you. This is the Epic Milan 7713P. These nodes can come with up to a terabyte of RAM in them. Over here, you get a really good view of the cooling duct that helps duct the air properly over the CPU and RAM. Just the attention to detail on these things is amazing. You can see we've got the, the Oxide logo and kind of their stylized little rectangles everywhere. In the back, you've got some fans. These are the big 80 millimeter fans. They're nice and quiet. It's a little hard to hear in the background right now because it is so quiet, but we actually have a full rack of these running just off screen. What really ties this whole thing together and is really special is this black chip right here. This is the service processor. This is co uh, completely custom implementation by Oxide. It runs their own OS based on Rust. 
and it's what allows everything to kind of cohesively work together in the rack. If you have a boot drive go bad and you swap a boot drive, you can actually bootstrap the CPU through UART of all things, like 3200 baud, bootstrap a small OS through the CPU in order to get this thing back online and behaving like the cloud computer that it is. One thing that I noticed that was really cool, these little flag looking things that are sticking up here and actually you can't see very well, but through the back, there's a whole bunch along the back. They're over in the sidecar too. These guys are a little modular temperature sensor that come off. This is what helps the system report. These guys put an insane attention to detail. These things are keyed. They're absolutely everywhere. This goes to show the amount of work that they're putting in. They've got temperature probes everywhere. They've got current probes everywhere. Anything that you wanna know, anything you need to manage on your hyperscale cloud computer, you can do it. And then remember, this thing comes as a turnkey solution. Even the fans in these guys are highly serviceable. You unplug a couple of connectors and then you flip up the screen lever and the entire assembly pops right out and you can swap in whatever you need. This is really cool. The co-founder and CTO, Brian Cantrell, just brought this over to me as I was pointing out all the niche little things on this board that I was noticing being a hardware nerd. This is a little dongle breakout board. It can plug into some of those miscellaneous ports that you see. It actually jacks into the I squared C buses of various hardware components so you can do some debugging. Now, theoretically, as a customer, you could do this if you really wanted to, but it's probably less than ideal because you'd have to figure out how to get this thing powered up on a bench and it'd be a little screwy. But it just goes to show the nature of the open sourceness of Oxide, their philosophy, and the really fine attention to details that these guys have in everything. And that wraps up our deep dive into Oxide Computer's impressive platform. From the flexibility of on-demand virtual machines to the sophisticated hardware and software co-design, it's clear that Oxide is pushing the boundaries of on-prem cloud computing. Their integration of metrics and telemetry, along with automated resource provisioning, offers a robust solution for both performance and utilization management. And with those hefty specs, 32 compute sleds per rack, AMD EPIC 7713P processors, and up to one terabyte of memory per sled. They're not just playing the game, they're redefining it with things like use of an ARM system controller instead of a traditional system, UEFI. This innovative move brings greater flexibility and efficiency, enhancing system performance and management. It's a leap forward in making computing environments more dynamic and responsive. So if you're as excited about the future of cloud computing as we are, Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more cutting edge tech content, and ring that notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming reviews. Until next time, keep innovating and exploring the vast world of high performance computing.